In this pencast, we're going to talk about uh, the proof of theorem 9.3, which says that the axiom of Posh holds for an omega triangle, whether the line enters at a vertex or at a point not on the vertex. So remember, an omega triangle uh, is three lines with the vertices AB, and two of the lines that are of infinite length are parallel to one another. And so <clears throat> the idea with this proof uh, is that we're going to let C prime be some point on the interior of the triangle uh, through which a line L passes. And so re recall that the axiom of Posh says that if a line passes through the interior of a triangle, then uh, it must, then if it enters on, <clears throat> sorry, if a line enters a triangle at a vertex, it must pass through the opposite side, it must exit the triangle at the opposite side, and if it passes, uh, if it enters the triangle at a side, it must um, pass through either the opposite vertex or one of the opposite sides. So we're going to assume that a line L uh, enters this omega triangle and that C prime, this point right here, is one of the points that L passes through. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to define the points D and E as the points where A C prime intersects B omega and B C prime intersects A omega. <clears throat> and so we have two different possible triangles, regular triangles, inside this omega triangle, ADB and BAE. So C prime, remember, is a line is a point on our line, and now we're going to let C be so the point where our line L enters the triangle. Uh, <clears throat> and so we're going to talk about the, the different cases, what could happen um, where C is on various locations on this triangle. So our first case is <clears throat> where C is actually either the vertex A or the vertex B. So uh, in this case, if C is equal to B, and then we have C prime in here, then our line L is going to enter at the vertex B, and it's going to exit at the point D that we defined above. And so it entered at a vertex and it exited at the opposite side. Uh, the same sort of thing happens if C is equal to A. Then our line L enters at the vertex A and exits on the line B omega at point E. Okay, so those are the two, uh, the two easier cases. Uh, our next case is what happens if our point C is on B omega, but not on B, okay? Well, in this case, we're going to look at the triangle ABD, and note that the line L enters the triangle uh, ABD at the point C prime, and now Pasha's axiom, remember, the original version holds for triangle ABD. So the, uh, the original form of the Pasha axiom says that this line L must exit uh, line, the triangle ABD either on a side or on a vertex. Um, so it'll exit either here or here. Or if we're really lucky, it'll exit there. And all of those points are on the omega triangle. And so uh, that is what we're hoping to happen. The same thing happens in case three. Uh, only now we're going to assume that C is on some point uh, along A omega. So I guess we should say same argument as case two. And now the, the last case is the trickiest, and I've spent the last hour trying to convince myself that this argument actually works. And I'm pretty sure we're on, on good footing here. So we're going to suppose that C is some point on the line AB. And of course that C prime is to this point in the interior. And so L is this line that passes through C and C prime. So now, uh, we're going to assume that L, uh, well, if L, if L intersects A omega or B omega, we're done. Okay, so suppose L does not intersect A omega or B omega. Uh, then the claim is going to be that this line L is actually parallel to A and parallel to B, which means that it must exit the triangle at the point omega. Uh, <clears throat> and we can see this, we can see that this would be true because if you consider some line entering, let's say this is L prime, if we have some line below B omega, then we know that this line, L prime, must intersect 
the line A omega at some point, um, because B omega is parallel to A omega, but if it's going to intersect with A omega, then it's going to have to intersect L prime as well. Okay, and the same sort of thing happens uh, on the other side. If, uh, if we have a line just above A omega, then that line is destined to eventually cross B omega by virtue of the fact that A omega is parallel to B omega, and since L is between those two lines, uh, it must also be crossed by that line, which means that any line just below B omega must intersect with L, and any line just above A omega must intersect with L, which means that B omega is parallel to L, and A omega is parallel to L. And that means that L, uh, I guess, goes through the point omega. Uh, and that, that gives us our result. It's now entering on the side AB and leaving uh, at the point omega. Uh, <clears throat> now, I suppose I, I should point out that there is one case that we haven't mentioned here, and that's the case where... Um, let's talk up here. Case 5. Um, C... Well, L enters at omega which is essentially saying we, we start off with the assumption that L is a line that's between A omega and B omega that is parallel to both. And what we end up doing is we just apply... Um, let's just do a quick little diagram here. We apply Pasha's axiom to the triangle ABD again uh, because L is entering this triangle ABD on the side BD. Um, and so, since it doesn't intersect uh, with A omega by definition, it must be entering, it must be exiting uh, triangle ABD on the side AB, which means it's exiting the omega triangle at the line AB.